Welcome to Tag Perspective. This is Subs Week, or a couple of weeks this month. I'm Tara, and today we'll be discussing Norse shamanism. Okay, so as usual, I'll be putting the question below, so you can peruse that if you so desire. After just rereading the question, I realized that I apparently mentally zoomed in on one part of the question and totally forgot that there was other parts to it, so awkward. Hopefully this is helpful anyway, I'm sorry. I will be focusing on sources talking about archaeological evidence for Norse shamanism. Okay, there you go. First off, just using the term shamanism to apply to Norse practices is controversial. Not everyone is going to be a fan of using that term. And if you're going to be looking up information on that, I would recommend trying out some other search terms in addition or even instead of shamanism. Controversy aside, I just don't find shamanism as a category that useful in considering Norse practice. If we're going to say that shamanism equates to certain kinds of shamanic practices that are practiced across different cultures, if you look at Norse culture, as far as I can tell, there isn't really just one figure that is the shaman who does all shaman things. There's different kinds of magical practitioners, and some of the things some of them do could be called shamanic. And I just don't see the point of grouping together all the shamanic practices when that's not how they're laid out, when there's already these clear categories that exist within the Norse way of looking at things. It seems to be pretty commonly believed that the Norse were influenced by the shamanic practices of the Sami people. If there's one type of practitioner that's brought up the most when it comes to shamanic practices, it's definitely Satan. I don't know about my pronunciation on that, but... So if you're looking for archaeological evidence of shamanic practices, I think your best bet would be looking at the graves of practitioners of Seder, particularly aristocratic women and the graves of Volvar, which is plural of Volva. I think probably the best evidence you could find are hallucinogens, like bags of henbane or cannabis seeds, but also they found certain tools like staves and seat stool platform kind of things that have been considered by many to be part of a magical ritual shamanic practice. Obviously in archaeology what you find are objects, and determining what they actually did with those objects is open to endless debate. Below I'm going to link to something that talks about the staffs. I haven't read the entire thing yet, but I found the beginning of it quite interesting. Because in the archaeology we have these staffs, which as far as I know are most widely believed currently to be the staff of a vulva. And if you don't know, a vulva is sort of this sorceress, seeress character. Part of the meaning of their name is that they carry this magical staff. So finding graves where you find women who have all of this magical paraphernalia and seem to be quite powerful given the kinds of things that were buried with them and also are buried with a staff. You, you might make that connection. But apparently until the 90s, these staffs were most commonly believed to be roasting spits. So, archaeology. Anyway, mostly what I wanted to do in this video is link you to another video to someone who can say it much better than I can, and I think probably is a much better source. There are three videos over on the Cornell University channel, which are recordings of a guest lecturer talking about Norse cosmology, beliefs, burials, all kinds of stuff. They're really good. I would recommend watching all of it from beginning to end, but all of it's about six hours long, so that's up to you. But more specifically, in his third lecture, he has a section where he talks about magic, and he goes through some of the big archaeological findings in the graves of these vulva, or sorceresses as he calls them. But he has some really great descriptions of what it would have been like to actually be in the presence of this person, and what kind of impact the way they looked and dressed and the tools that they possessed might have actually had in life, which I think is definitely worth checking out. So, if you would like to just see that section and miss out on all the rest, that section is in the video titled The Shape of the Soul, the Viking Mind, and the Individual. And that section on magic and the vulva begins at about 44 minutes and 32 seconds and ends at 52 minutes and 8 seconds. So that's only about 7 or 8 minutes, considerably less than the full 6 hours. I have saved your time. 
still it's a really interesting lecture. I would recommend watching the whole thing, but you know, that's just me. So I know that that doesn't answer the entirety of your question, but I hope that at least gives you some interesting things to go off of as far as the archaeology is concerned. I hope you're all having a good week, and I will see you again next week for a double dose of subs this month. The more I say that, the more cringy it sounds.